and welcome to another episode of the EPP Group podcast. I am your host, Anna Gumbau, and today we will be talking about how we make fast and wasteful fashion and textiles out of fashion. Europeans discard some 11 kilos of clothes every year. That is a massive amount of waste with a significant impact on our environment. And to address that, the EU wants our textile industry to make clothes and other kinds of textile products and apparel that last longer and that are repairable. And that is why the European Commission launched an EU strategy for sustainable textiles that is now being discussed at the European Parliament. In today's episode, we will be diving deep into this topic with some uh, great speakers. Because to talk about this, we have with us, first of all, the EPP's uh, lead lawmaker on this file with the Environment Committee, Ms. Pernille Weiss from uh, Denmark. Thanks a lot for being with us. Thank you. Also with us, uh, bringing the perspective of the Industry Committee, is member of the European Parliament, Henna Virkunen from Finland. Yeah. Great to have you with us. Great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> And with us is also Elsa Skjold. She's an associate professor at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Denmark, uh, focusing on business, de business developments for a circular economy in the textiles, fashion and interior sectors. Currently also piloting a project on this very topic funded by the Danish government. Ms. Skjold, thanks a lot for being with us. Thank you. Uh, to get us started, I think that would be great to hear from, uh, from Pernille Weiss. Uh, why does the EU textile strategy matter so much and what are your priorities as one of the key legislators on this file? You touched upon it yourself in the introduction that uh, we uh, produce every citizen in the EU 12 kilos of, of waste because of textiles. We only use uh, our textile uh, pieces seven to eight times before we then send them into the waste stream. And the sector in total is uh, emitting more CO2 than the car industry. So there's really, really a high potential to have a better uh, climate impact from the textile uh, sector. But also we want uh, the EU textile sector to be the leading sustainable industry globally. Because we know that the market of, of EU is a very strong engine and muscle to drive uh, the world in a more sustainable direction. So we need to co-create uh, member states, uh, the European institutions together with researchers and especially the industry to, to find ways and tools uh, of how we can do much more sustainable textiles in the future and hopefully be the best market for the most innovative and sustainable industries in the, in the textiles to actually stay and develop and grow and produce in, in Europe. So that's, uh, that's the aim of the strategy, of mm -hmm. course. I will ask you about the uh, specific tools and, and instruments that we can have at our disposal later for that, but I think it's, it's really interesting to see how the EU can, can use its market power to drive a change globally. Uh, Ms. Virkunen, which potential do you see in Europe to, to lead this global change towards a more truly sustainable textile sector? Of course, we have very strong industrial bases in Europe, but during the last decades, we have seen the change that now China is the one who is really running globally, who is the leader. If you will look at how much they are producing and exporting textiles mm -hmm. nowadays. But as we know, our main policy is to be and become sustainable in all the fields. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the sustainability of textile industry in the global scale, we know that it's not uh, sustainable, not when we look at the environmental aspect, like mm -hmm. Pernille just said, how much it is polluting, and also when we look at the social aspects, that mm -hmm. how uh, the people in what kind of conditions they are having uh, in their well, in their workplaces, for example, mm -hmm. in the textile industry, it's not sustainable. So mm -hmm. I think uh, in, in Europe we have a lot of potential, of course, when we look at the quality, mm -hmm and also the sustainability in both social and environmental aspects. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy that we have nowadays a lot of uh, new research and development in, in this area. Mm -hmm. And I think we can really be competitive mm -hmm. in the future when we are more paying more attention of the mm -hmm. sustainability and also uh, the quality of mm -hmm. these textiles. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. We have uh, a lot of potential for research and innovation and also for testing uh, new business models uh, towards, uh, towards a more a circular economy. Uh, Ms. Schult, um, what is the potential for circular business models in the, in the textile sector? Um, and what have you been looking into specifically as part of, uh, as part of your work? 
Yes, yeah, so specifically in uh, Denmark, we have a mm -hmm. politically funded uh, research partnership where we try uh, all together to create like an ecosystem mm -hmm. or pilot test mm -hmm. of what could this be. Um, and I think it's important to understand that circular business models are indeed not new. They are very old, they are thousands of years mm -hmm. old, they're very well tested. But specifically with the fashion and textiles area, we have maybe one of the most linear economies of mm -hmm. all because of uh, our fashion culture that says that if something is not in fashion, then it's an obsolete product. You cannot use it anymore and you need something new. Mm -hmm. um, so I think um, what then uh, happened is that um, back in the early 90s, there was a lot of actually EU regulation that was um, abolished. Mm -hmm. And we could tell that by that exact point, the fast fashion was born. Mm -hmm. uh, the globalization was escalated, mm -hmm. the outsourcing of production where we lost a lot of uh, workplaces in Europe mm -hmm. was escalated, and the lowering of price and quality was escalated as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and this means that we have a sector that really was the best on its field to make linear economy, mm -hmm. and now we need to reverse it back. Mm -hmm. So what I am uh, asking and mm -hmm. what my research fellows are asking mm -hmm. for politicians is actually to, to revisit mm -hmm. what kind of political framework was mm -hmm. it that we had that, uh, that worked uh -huh. so that we had a lot of local production mm -hmm. uh, which we know will give much higher product development, mm -hmm. much more knowledge about materials in mm -hmm. industry and among citizens mm -hmm. as well, because we must be honest and say that these uh, cheap products have caused generations that mm -hmm. honestly don't know what uh, a textile is. They don't know that cotton come from a plant or wool mm -hmm. come from a sheep. They don't know how to mend it mm -hmm. or build nice wardrobes. So there's a lot of mm -hmm. loss of knowledge. And I generally think that the strategy could push for getting some of that back mm -hmm. to Europe. Because in a way, this is coming back uh, to, to the way things used to be done, right? I mean, I still keep, I don't know, some of my uh, uh, late grandmother's uh, blazers or, or clothing. And it was the, the, the norm was to, if uh, the heel on your shoe broke, that you would repair it, right? So sometimes, sometimes I wonder myself, like, what happened here that, uh, that, we, uh, that we forgot this, uh, this old habits? Like, how... Um, Uncommon it is now to get mm. yeah your shoes or, or your piece of clothing repaired. Like, what, what, why do you think that that's, that's yes? The and case? then there's a lot of myths that uh, you know if it will be higher quality, uh, then we will lose a lot of workplaces. And uh, mm -hmm. what about the poor people? They can't afford to to buy it. And and with that, I will say that you know there was a designer saying to me uh, recently, you know, constraints pushes for creativity, mm -hmm. and it's the same with entrepreneurship. You know, you have some, some frameworks and then you figure out, hmm, how am I going to make money on that yeah. one? Mm -hmm. And that is going to happen. So I think it's also time to be a little bold and not be so afraid. And, mm -hmm. and all, we also don't have uh, workplaces on a dead planet. So we need basically to take action now. Yeah, but, but also mm -hmm. to work with this urgency, sense of urgency that actually mm -hmm. is among citizens that uh, now we have had uh, 30 years of consumerism, mm -hmm. uh, but digitalization made us also pr uh, both produce and consume more, but also to know more about the, mm -hmm. the, the backside, the consequences of the way mm -hmm. we live. Now we know, so now we know we have to do better. Mm -hmm. And I think that is why we are at a kind of a U-turn uh, in, in the European history, that uh, mm -hmm. yes, we run wild in uh, open supply chains and consumerism, but now we know that we, that is not the way to carry on Europe for the next generations. Mm -hmm. um, we have to take better care of our environment, uh, of our climate, and also of our economy. Because mm -hmm. the way we are driving our economy now is not actually improving our competitiveness. Mm -hmm. Also because we know from the young generations that they, they want to be healthier in the way that they are on this planet. So we have to also to give them the production uh, systems, uh, mm -hmm. the trade systems, the, uh, the, the environmental uh, frameworks uh, in order to live the life that they really want to, to have, taking better care of nature. Mm -hmm.
think also that the consumers that uh, they would like to have more information also yes, about the exactly. products they mm -hmm. are buying, that how it's produced, that how sustainable yeah. it is, and how is the value yeah. chain behind yeah. this textile. And that's why I think it's very important that we will add that kind of information in the future to the textiles. For example, that kind of digital uh, product passport mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. is now one of the ideas yeah. how we could solve this. Because I think more transparency and information is also needed uh -huh. that the consumers, they can make uh, choices, that they know what is the background. But also that we know from the, the, the industry themselves that they ask for rules and mm. tools uh, mm -hmm. to make greenwashing go away, yeah. but also to have a more healthier competition mm -hmm. between what is actually doing a good impact on, mm -hmm. on the industry, on the nature, on the climate, etc., etc. It's also mm -hmm. a matter of energy uh, consumption. It's about chemistry, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And they need simply more, more level play mm -hmm. field for for the good players, mm -hmm. the innovative players, uh, mm -hmm. to to have more uh, market mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, market position yeah, and acknowledgement. Yeah. I and I think add, since my field is yeah. um, is. Uh, consumer research mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and uh, we have had so many years where we thought that, you know we pour information into consumers they will do the right thing right and not and especially not with clothing because it's uh, so intimate exactly. and emotional yeah. and culturally defined what you do so if you have a culture that says oh. overconsumption you will do it mm -hmm. so we just had a huge uh, survey in deco with the danish consumer council asking consumers what is the most important for you to keep and treasure a garment and that is actually uh, if it fits your body well yeah. whereas if it's uh, sustainable or not that's in level five and there's huge confusion about what it is and honestly i think we shouldn't demand of consumers to read all these weird labels and websites yeah. that should be just law enforced so they know when i buy something Mm -hmm. You know, I can I, trust, I can trust mm -hmm. it, and then I, I can look what is really nice for me, mm -hmm. because we know that mm -hmm. that works. Yeah, I, I don't think also that information alone is enough, but I think mm -hmm. it's something that is really needed, uh, mm -hmm. like common standards and also transparency that we know mm -hmm. how sustainable uh, the product is and what is the background behind that mm -hmm. production. But uh, also I think that the big big change is not possible without uh, uh, the big companies in this mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and now there's, I think, very promising steps they are also taking because they are now demanding that there must be more sustainable materials in mm. their textiles mm -hmm. and so on. So when it's coming really mega trend uh, mm. with these big big companies in the global level, then I think it will be also chasing yes. this. And market. what we are all discussing mm -hmm. is then you know what type of data is then underpinning this law mm. and and because uh, fashion and textiles is maybe perceived as as not so serious a topic. Mm. There's really a huge lack of research on the area, mm. so we actually don't have the data mm -hmm. to support what is sustainable and circular or not. Mm. Uh, right. And actually, industry is requiring, could you please help us, you know, just so we know what mm. to bounce up to, so we don't go exactly. in the wrong direction, uh -huh. so we all just know what's the game, yeah. you know, what's, we're going to play. What's the standard, right? What's the like, standard, what's the yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So there's a huge mm -hmm. body, maybe 15 years of work until we can mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. assess mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because in terms of instruments that we have our, at our disposal to, to enable that change, so on the one hand, we, we mentioned already uh, digital product passports, which are aimed to uh, provide information, right, on the, the traceability of, of, uh, of, the, of the materials, etc. Mm -hmm. Which other tools uh, is the EU or, or can the EU make use of and leverage to, to enable this, yeah. this transition? And so right mm -hmm. now there are colleagues working on the Eco Design Directive mm -hmm. that is now being recasted, done better to the, the scope it had before, but also to enlarge the scope to cover uh -huh. more product uh, typologies. Mm -hmm. So that's very good and hopefully we will see when that work is done that some of the asks uh, that we do in the uh, EU textile strategy, mm -hmm. that we can actually say yes, 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 tick them off, mm -hmm. uh, and then continue the work on, on things that are more in, in, the, uh, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then also there is the initiative on uh, green claims. Uh -huh. uh, that's about uh, 
taking out again uh, green washing so that we know that those who say that they are green can they actually prove it uh -huh. and can they prove it with uh, a number of data that uh, is available for both the checkups but also for for the industry uh, to compete with each other how to do even better mm -hmm. uh, on the different targets with the different mm -hmm. tools and data mm -hmm. yeah. Because there are different types, for instance, of, of certification when it comes to yeah. what is really like ecological or not. So this is once again boils down, I'm guessing, to the topic of yeah, how to make sure that that consumers know what they really have uh, in their uh, in their faces, right? Mm. Um, and, and how do you think that, that the EU textile strategy then fits with other uh, pieces of energy and, and climate legislation? This is just like a part of the bigger puzzle. So how, do this, how does this interact then with uh, other pieces of, of legislation? That's something you want to add, maybe, Ms. Wittgenen? Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, textile strategy and textile industry is a very important part of our Green Deal. Mm -hmm. When we want to be climate neutral in 2050, when we want to be more sustainable and environmental friendly, uh, in all the areas, textile industry mm -hmm. plays a very important role there. And when we look at uh, the tools, what we are having and instruments, of course, as a legislation makers, we always have the regulation part in, in Europe, and we know that Europe is very strong in that. But of course, it's important now that we are doing all the background work uh, very carefully before mm -hmm. we start to regulate things. But Bernile also already mentioned uh, several regulations we are having on. And then, of course, we have all also funding mm -hmm. and I think it's important that we are funding also research and development mm -hmm. in, in this area because like it was mentioned it's really needed and we have to also uh, uh, fund uh, small SMEs mm -hmm. and startups who has often very great ideas but who need uh, more yeah. support also yeah, exactly. uh, with, the, with the ideas mm -hmm. and one uh, legislation what I would like to also mention is the revision of the uh, waste uh, framework mm -hmm. uh, directive because uh, I think also that the waste is a very big problem mm -hmm. in textile industry and now we should prevent, of course, waste. It's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. But when we are having waste now, uh, in the future, all the member states, they have to take care that we are collecting separately this uh, mm -hmm. textile waste. And I think it's also an important uh, step it's very, forward. Very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And then link yep. it to the waste shipment mm -hmm. regulation mm -hmm. there, because it's also a big, big issue that a lot of the, the clothes that we discharge mm -hmm. as waste from Europe, it ends in the landfilling in Africa. Mm -hmm or in, uh, in the CO2 polluting incinerators, and, and that cannot happen in the future. So we need to be better to, to sort, mm -hmm. and that starts in the households that we know where to put clothes we don't no longer want mm -hmm. to have. And what does the municipality then do? Uh, collecting, sorting, mm -hmm. and then sending it by, via whatever transport mm -hmm to where it is most sustainable for, for the uh, mm -hmm. ingredients uh, to take another round and another round and another round in the circular economy. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it's all about. And therefore, I'm very, um, uh, I agree very much with uh, Henna that the research and development, but also uh, funding the bridging between new technologies into the market. Because there is a lot of research going on, and Elsa can tell us a, a mm -hmm. much about that. But the bridging and, and the merger of the technologies into the very conservative market mechanisms, uh, we need to support that much more to create actually also a sustain, economically sustainable new ways of mm -hmm. uh, technologies in the, in the sector. Mm -hmm. Especially when we speak about recycling, because I think exactly. the separating now the waste, uh, textile waste, it's just the first step because we still have many challenges with recycling these textiles mm -hmm. because there's so much different materials, different yeah. fibers, yeah. and it's not uh, very easy. So much more research and development yeah. is needed yeah. in this mm -hmm. area. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also is, the information mm -hmm. to the consumers of how to mend it, uh, if, if it needs to be mended, but also the washing and drying. There's a lot mm -hmm. of potential to cut down of energy consumption by the way we wash and dry our clothes. Mm -hmm. And that also touches about, uh, the, uh, the other part of the environmental legislation that is about uh, reach and uh, that is about uh -huh. chemicals. chemicals. Yes, heat. exactly, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there yeah. are actually biosolutions as uh, good alternatives to chemistry that mm -hmm. are not yet approved uh, to be uh, to be used, um, mm -hmm. they, it's the, the, the speed by which biosolutions can come to the market, by which we can actually lower the temperature in our washing machine, mm -hmm. uh, and also do 
less polluting mm, uh, and or zero polluting in, in the best of all worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, that is also a part of, of the big equation that we need to, to fix uh, for the future. Mm -hmm. We can really hear that textile industry is everywhere. Yeah. I think all the examples, yes. there's always. Yeah. 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 That's true. If That's I could true. go to uh -huh. um, pick up on the, mm -hmm. the comment about the recycling, I think currently in the in research environment, there's a very uh, red flag being, uh, being held up uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, the pointing out that we should have more recycled materials uh, because we're very concerned. And we always had recycling mm -hmm. uh, in textiles, but it was something we did much later. And the quality yeah. of uh, the product from the start and the textiles from the start was way higher. Mm -hmm. So we need mm -hmm. to start in the start with prevention. Look at the waste hierarchy mm -hmm. where we start with prevention. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, one of that is to look very carefully at CO2 emissions and how we measure that. Mm -hmm. And that we include, for example, uh, fossil-based uh, textiles that mm -hmm. is up to 60-70% of textiles mm -hmm. are polyester it's made uh -huh. of uh, plastic and in order to make them cheaper. And it causes huge problems in the mm -hmm. waste landfills and in the recycling plants and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so and and also there's a because of this very lacking knowledge about what is a good textile mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. when you recycle you take the wonderful long fibers that gives a, yeah. a high performing beautiful textile and you chop it up and actually destroy a wonderful resource so we mm -hmm. need as as a, as mm -hmm. a panel says a lot of very much more refined sorting mm -hmm. of what can we you know use for various purposes of repurposing what what is sound to recycle or, mm -hmm. and what should mm -hmm. we perhaps say we should never have made this maybe we need to destroy it under you mm -hmm. know uh, safe conditions instead that, of having it spread out even more because when you recycle for example polyester Mm -hmm. It will eventually start to deteriorate and then it releases gases and mm -hmm. microplastic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. on your skin in the environment. So actually taking a problem and making it worse by mm -hmm. recycling. Mm -hmm. So there's a just to say in the in the in the in the strategy to say we need much more recycled materials is really, really dangerous right. unless mm -hmm. you have the foundation right mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right. you roll out, you know, all what Penelope says. You know, until we do this, we should have lots. And, and you know what, when we look at research, when did circular economy work? Some of what we're looking at is, for example, uh, Japan in the 18th and 19th century, where there was extreme hard regulation on textiles. Mm -hmm. They had the highest quality ever. I mean, mm -hmm. in Finland, you would know because of your textile tradition. And you could earn money on selling little scraps of textiles. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and based on that, you develop the most beautiful design aesthetics that today we mm -hmm. look at it and we say, wow, it's just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So this nonsense about saying sustainable clothing, oh, that's the boring, we can't mm -hmm. have fun anymore. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a constraint. It's in the, need, it's it's in the contrary. Yes, yeah. it's in the contrary. We need mm -hmm. more quality. We have, because of the standardization that has happened and that we don't have production in Europe anymore. We have taken out all the good uh, technicians yeah. that used to, you know, know how to make a nice garment with a nice fit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So today we have less than 10% of our garments actually fit anyone's body mm -hmm. because it's made for mm -hmm. a standard body. So we, if we stand in front of the mirror and feel humiliated or mm -hmm. wrong, mm -hmm. it's, it's the garments that are wrong and that's just so sad. Uh -huh. And all of that uh -huh. we can actually push by taking making law that takes back control of our products it takes that back also product makes development. the industry yeah. much more interesting yes. for, for mm -hmm. nerds why uh, you can be a clocksmith or an engineer or a designer yes. you need the teamwork mm -hmm. yes. cross-disciplinary teamwork mm -hmm. every day every week to co-create and and hopefully mm -hmm. also in the future with the digital passport and and the way we we are de democratized mm -hmm. and open as a society in Europe. We also have the consumer on board uh -huh. mm -hmm. and the generations because the mending mm -hmm. of, of textiles mm -hmm. is something that my grandmother knew mm -hmm. a lot about. My mother still knows uh, a bit. Mm -hmm. 
my children know nothing about that. Yeah. And we also need that part of the yeah. circular economy in between generations uh -huh. uh, to, to be revitalized. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. in the in the trace partnership we have a concept yeah. we call textile citizenships, which I would uh -huh. have a big yeah. dream that we rolled out textile citizenships where we put together the old generation oh, who still idea. know yeah. textiles and can yeah. mend and teach the young generation kids ambassadors who are like a climate. Um, they are cool. occupied by climate, but they don't know anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. about it. That's so that could just, just be down wonderful. our alley as uh, uh -huh. EPPs. I mean, <laughs> that's you go common it. sense yes. kind uh -huh. of policy uh, yes. <laughs> framework. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and related to that, because uh, I just happened to be uh, in a panel with uh, all Nordic uh, yeah. experts. Uh, this, this wasn't intended necessarily, no. but uh, uh, Nordic countries, I think, have a very uh, interesting track record when it comes to uh, public-private partnerships mm -hmm. in, in in the field of circular economy. I don't mm -hmm. know. If there are some um, cases on the topic of, of Ashnor textiles or circular economy even more broadly that you want to highlight and that the, the rest of Europe could learn uh, could learn from. I think that, that there's a lot of inspiration that can be drawn from, uh, from mm -hmm. the region, isn't it? Indeed, uh, because we are a very informal uh, society in the mm -hmm. Nordic countries. We have used uh, not to have this hierarchy and silo communication. Mm -hmm. So, so we we can have a good, see many good examples of where researchers uh, and SMEs of different sizes, mm -hmm. but also relevant authorities and politicians, they speak to each other about the challenges that they see, and they try to find ways mm -hmm. to solve it. And since we know now that the only way to have a sustainable textile sector on the globe is by EU 27 mm -hmm. to co-create together. So we need also to facilitate for the rest of the EU that the way, the informal, nerdy way mm -hmm. uh, that we co-create in the Nordic countries, we can do that together with the rest mm -hmm. of our colleagues from other EU countries. And, and I, I'm optimistic in that because mm -hmm. working with the waste uh, shipment regulation, I also must acknowledge very much that there are also Southern and Eastern European colleagues who mm -hmm. are very um, much uh, having both the urgency but also the, uh, the, 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 the ideas on how we can co-create much, much more so that we get legislation on fast mm -hmm. track, but also especially innovation and research uh, funding to move much, much mm -hmm. faster and the implementing uh, and enforcement of all the rules mm -hmm. that we make here in Brussels. I mean, we put a lot of uh, regulatory mm -hmm. burdens also on member states saying to them, OK, now you integrate and now you enforce it. Mm -hmm. and, and we need the member states to help us uh, that all our good intentions and tools are actually used in the right way. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm coming from Finland and in, in Finland, I think uh, around the last five years, uh, sustainable textile industry has been something very interesting in our, uh, our economy also, because the forest industry is a very part, big part of Finnish industry and economy, and nearly all of the big uh, forest uh, companies, they have now their own uh, projects, how they are developing now sustainable fibers mm -hmm. out of forests and wood. And of course, it's, it's totally um, renewable, of course, and you can use it many times again. So what can what is now made on cotton can be made on wood also mm -hmm. in a much more sustainable way. And I think it's very interesting what is uh, happening there now. And it's together, of course, with researchers, universities and industries, how they have been developing mm. these sustainable ideas. But still now there is uh, some obstacles in the European markets because we can see that the uh, uh, application process of these new textile fibers, it's very, very slowly in, yeah. in Europe. It takes mm. years. So it's very difficult to come into the markets. Mm. Like Bernilla said uh, earlier, that often we have very promising startups and ideas but we should also boost, uh, yeah. of course, the business model in them and mm -hmm. we should also have access to markets them faster mm -hmm. than we have now. Mm -hmm. But uh, from the Finnish perspective, I have to say that uh, sustainable textile industry is something very interesting mm -hmm. in Finland now and there is nearly every day some kind of new reports on that, that what kind of new ideas there is. And also we can see that among the consumers that the second-hand shopping has become very mm -hmm. popular. There is a lot of small shops where you can, you can mm -hmm. buy uh, very beautiful textiles, mm -hmm. very good quality and mm -hmm. it has become 
more and more everyday life that the people mm -hmm. are buying from mm -hmm. second hands and mm -hmm. very good yeah. quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's also where we find uh, one of the very fundamental um, important parts of the European way of life that civil society is, is a part mm -hmm. of the ecosystem mm -hmm. that a lot of charity organizations is working Absolutely. in this uh, sector here providing mm -hmm. funding for, for, for citizens uh, who have special needs. And also mm -hmm. this way of using textile as a messenger of the European way of life and how mm -hmm. we act with neighbor love in the way that we actually mm -hmm. uh, circulate our textiles. Mm -hmm. That's also a wonderful way on, on how we can glue our union even better and stronger uh, together uh, in times of war and crises mm -hmm. and where enemies are trying to divide mm -hmm. us, uh, that uh, through our daily life, uh, with the garments we use, that's actually an unarticulated but very strong way mm -hmm. to bond uh, with each other cross-border. Definitely. Uh, we've talked about the uh, European uh, legislative framework and all the tools that we have at our, uh, at our disposal. At the end of the day, majority of our, uh, the vast majority of our companies, of our economy is made by SMEs. So uh, I'm just curious to understand from you, because on the one hand, we need a strong regulatory framework, mm -hmm. but also on the other hand, we cannot overburden particularly our, our SMEs, right? So how do we strike a balance here? Or is it that something that should be mainly be targeting, you know, the big fast fashion? Mm. multinational corporations, yeah. I misquilled, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's your <laughs> king, my, my king <laughs> was, uh, Because I think when we, sometimes when we talk about a circular economy, we, we say that it's, uh, we all agree what it is, but actually mm -hmm. there are very many various understandings mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. it is. And some interpretations are like a very linear economy, but with a little bit of circular economy. You know, mm -hmm. for example, have a fast fashion model, but you but you run recycled fibers into mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what, not what I understand mm -hmm. with circular economy. If you look at what is the concept about, it comes from researchers looking at nature and see, hmm, how does that work? You have a lot of resource flows. Mm -hmm. Nothing gets harmed, but it does change once in a while mm -hmm. and everything is globally connected, but in small mm -hmm. local circuits. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you were talking about. Like we need to, mm -hmm. to get the eyes back and see what mm -hmm. do we actually have Mm. locally, what types of knowledge or um, competences mm. or strengthholds do we have mm. in the respective uh, mm. EU countries? Mm. What kind of materials or resources do we have and could we think of them in a smarter way? So maybe we, we revisit what is a textile mm. made out of mm. and ultimately what is then this uh, ecosystem that can make uh, young entrepreneurs flourish yeah. and yeah. help us build this new circular economy mm. that is not, you know, transgressing the planetary boundaries. And with that said, you know, I, I'm not against uh, huge corporations, but I find that they have more difficult in this transition because many of the ones we have today, they were born with the globalization. Mm -hmm. They were mm. born with this, you know, removal mm. of a lot of uh, legal barriers and now they, they simply need to learn to do exactly the opposite of what they're doing. And, mm -hmm. and they, they, they admit this themselves, they find it very difficult. So mm -hmm. I think actually we, we of course need to uh, maybe, uh, um, what we're trying in Denmark and with this uh, TRACE um, partnership is to say, could we maybe be a knowledge sharing hub mm -hmm. so that each little SME mm -hmm is not overburdened with all sorts of mm -hmm. documentation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. reporting mm -hmm. and, you know, could uh -huh. they help each other like in umbrella um, organizations yeah. that could uh, foster this, um, mm -hmm. this uh, all of that they need to apply to exactly. so they don't mm -hmm. sit because typically they have maybe, you know, a communication uh, employee that is also the CSR responsible that is also in the supply. Mm. So how can they submit to all of this? Mm -hmm. so, so that's mm -hmm. very necessary. How can we build this mm. resilience and yeah. system around them? And that will, will maybe mm -hmm. take a little less details on the regulatory uh, specifications, mm -hmm. uh, more mm -hmm. sandboxing in the specific parts uh -huh. of the se sector could also be a way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but and also to always link it to competitiveness. So what makes actually micro uh, uh, enterprises? Because mm -hmm. uh, most of the SMEs is in in this uh, sector is actually micro. Uh, so that's uh, that's enterprises with below than ten employees. Mm -hmm. 
they are very much often run by by a woman and women we knew we know uh, is not that perfect in having mm. quick funding to growth yep. that mm. is where we Absolutely. specifically could do much more to have more mm -hmm. female entrepreneurs but also to 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 fuel the growth of uh, mm -hmm. the more sustainable uh, business models coming from the micro uh, enterprises and mm -hmm. Elsa is so right that the big players in the fast fashion industry that's not the the change agents but they rely actually upon the new ideas and the new concepts coming from micro to SME meeting the big machines of fast fashion industry that then can adopt and if we make the fast fashion industry recreate themselves into be uh, fast in change and not fast in how to sell that would be wonderful and that should be one of our mm -hmm. uh, overall targets of the EU textile industry uh, strategy also. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, You're welcome. I don't know, uh, want to add something? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd like to say about SMEs that this is a very important topic for our political group in our EPP because it's uh, really really important to find the ways how we could support our small and micro businesses and especially how we could uh, help them to find their markets, have access to markets and also they have uh, to have access to funding with their ideas. So mm -hmm. this is very important for us, uh, of course, in the textile industry to where we are focusing now, but uh, all together when we speak about Green Deal and the sustainability, we know that there has come a lot of different reporting obligations for our industries mm. and we have to really take care that our SMEs, that they don't have extra regulatory mm -hmm. burden here, mm. that they can really grow with their ideas in, in Europe. And because of digitalization, it's also much easier for SMEs to find their partners and customers exactly. now because the whole yeah. world is open for them and of course especially our European single market. So mm -hmm. they need also support to find the customers yeah. in this yeah. 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 and I think it, in all of this what's it all about we need to reduce how many mm -hmm. uh, how much volume mm -hmm. this uh, how many mm -hmm. resources mm -hmm. but and the, with the we need to actually make one fourth of what we do today by tomorrow at mm -hmm. least but we need to do it smarter more local uh, build more local systems take reshore. Mm -hmm. And I think, yes, in Scandinavia, we have our welfare societies and therefore good infrastructure between public and private. But in mm -hmm. uh, the Baltics, in Portugal, in Spain, they, have, they, they used to be our factory. And they still, they started yes. very late outsourcing, so they still have the technicians exactly. and all the skilled people and the people who actually know about mm. what a textile is. Mm. And we could be, you know, a good textile family again. And mm -hmm. I would love for that to happen. It's a wonderful tagline that EU is a strategy for, the, for growing, sustainable growing together. Uh, textile. It, yes, Indeed. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, to, to wrap up our, our mm -hmm. discussion, because time uh, time has flown by, I think our um, our audience uh, would want to get inspired to maybe take uh, some action by uh, by themselves. So, what is perhaps one piece of advice that you would want to share? With the audience in order to make more sustainable choices in the way that they consume uh, consume fashion what would you tell me what would you what do you do uh, from this point of view mm -hmm. I would want to mm -hmm. I actually use much more time in reading the things that are in in, mm -hmm. in small lines uh, being curious on what is mm -hmm. the availability of information right now and where could it be improved and that's also why I've put mm -hmm. forward some other projects on the digital passport and, and the climate labeling mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, as a part of the EP STOA, the Technology Assessment Panel, so that we uh -huh. get more knowledge on how to actually improve uh, that what we read when we read, either mm -hmm. it's on a cheese or a, a pair of new trousers, that I get the information that makes me sure that as a consumer, I actually did also a good choice for the mm -hmm. next generation, buying either this cheese or these trousers. Uh -huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm. And if you have clothes what you don't need anymore or what you are not using, you should give them to someone or sell mm -hmm. them in second hand or find a second life for those, <laughs> those clothes. Because I yeah. think it's, it's the best way to use the same textile to the same pur purpose, but then maybe another person will you know, find new, new life for mm -hmm. those textiles mm -hmm. you don't use anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. And Ms. Kiel, what is something that, uh, as a consumer, is the lowest hanging fruit that, yes. uh, that we could do? Stop buying clothes you don't really like. <laughs> <laughs> Only buy what is fabulous uh, and amazing, mm -hmm. learn how to repair it, or mm -hmm. find out who can repair it near you mm -hmm. that you can pay for doing it, and mm -hmm. learn how to wash it, and learn to love your clothing more, and you know what? you will be rewarded many mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. because you will feel much stronger and more beautiful mm -hmm. and nice, whoever you are. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> Well, those are those are great tips that uh, that we've got to share. So I think it's been a great conversation. That's all the time that we have for today. But thank you very much to thank Ms. Camille Weiss, so Ms. Hanna Virkunen and Ms. Elsa Skjold for having joined us in uh, what's been a very interesting uh, episode. We're going to be back with our next uh, episodes very soon. In the meantime, don't forget to follow the EPP group on our social media and see you next time.